Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it's almost 3 o'clock and the 12th. I think today, um, you're not going to see this video, but I'm putting on, up another video on the mule. And I took the mule for a ride, and I kind of drove it around a little bit over the last few days. And it has a problem, and let me show you what's going wrong here. And let me show you what I'm trying to do to fix it. Um, the engine has a torque converter on it. And the torque converter has a chain drive. Right. So if you look right there, you can see the chain drive. And what I did is I had a chain between these two. And the problem is this kind of spline shaft here is a little smaller than one inch so even though I tighten these down um, you, you kind of have like three points of contact you got the back of the sprocket and then you got these two so especially when you're putting a lot of uh, power on it it has a tendency to weeble wobble as I'm doing with my fingers and then it loosens up and you run into other problems so this is one inch it steps down and this is three quarters and you guys could see what the problem is there um, if I take these both off you guys could see I have a nice step here and I also have a threaded end. So here's the plan. I want to take this guy, smash it up against there nice and tight, and kind of put some um, shim around it some, so that it's, it's sitting good and tight. The second thing I did, and I'll show you how I made this, this is a heavy steel donut and but my problem is the drill bit I have is three quarters and it needs to be a little bigger than three quarters like a sixteenth bigger um, which would make it and eh, maybe not even quite that much because thirteen sixteenths was too big so anyway I have a um, a bore, boring rod, bore, lathe bore, whatever you want to call it, um, on order, and hopefully it comes to me over the next few days. And I'll show you how all that works in a moment. Let me show you how I made this, just in case you guys ever need to make one. There's probably an easier way. But um, I just, I did the old brute force. I probably have about four hours or so into this, five hours, probably five hours. Um, and you'll see why in a second. I started out with um, some plate stock. And literally, this piece of plate stock and I figured out what size I wanted. Um, so I cut a square and then I used the corners to give me a place to drill a hole. So I drilled a hole in it. And then I um, did the nice circle and traced it out. Now I have a hole right in the center of the circle. And I'll take you to the basement for the next part. I used my, um, I got it from Harbor Freight. I don't think they sell them anymore. Musty One just found one. I think Grizzly might still sell these things. Anyway, I took my 3-in-1 machine here and, uh, 
before I drilled this hole out bigger, I had this in the center and um, chucked it up and cut it out. Now you might be saying, wow, you had a lot of cutting to do there. Well, I cut down on the amount of cutting I had to do because I used I used my grinder once I drew the circle on it. I used my uh, four inch grinder to take as much of the material off as as possible. Obviously I stayed outside the lines of the circle and then I turned it on down. So I used um, the four inch grinder and you'll you'll see some oh god the corners on the ground here. These are really good to leave on the ground that way when you go by with an all-terrain vehicle or something you can poke holes in the tires. So anyway so I cut the corners off and then smoothed it out the best I could then I put it in the lathe and turned it to get this hole just exactly to the right size I ordered a boring rod and it did not come in today's mail so that doesn't make me happy but hopefully it gets here soon and the way a, a boring rod works is you basically chuck this up right like that nice and tight all that kind of stuff um, and the boring rod is on a kind of a long shaft that's off to one side so as this is spinning you put it on the inside and you take a little material out when I had the bolt through it right I had it out here and I was just turning it right and and grinding and bringing it down I used the bit this is three quarters that's how I got that hole in it right I just chucked up the puck and used the drill right chuck the puck up that can almost be a profanity and you run the through this this part just slides out of the way right this just goes on back and you can do what you need to do anyway that gets me the adapter plate now this will slide up real tight up against where the shaft goes from um, a big three quarters let's say to a small one inch so this will slide right up tight against the shoulder I got to put a keyway in it and I don't own a, a brooch um, so probably what I'm gonna do is um, use a jigsaw to uh, I got some really fine blades just go nice and slow put a notch in it then get use a square file to um, manually make real carefully the um, the keyway for this then I'll drill a hole and tap and uh, make it so that this once again goes right up tight and um, and clamps well to the shaft between here and the sprocket I'm going to drill a few holes in here and bolt this right to the sprocket so now the sprocket will be shimmed on the shaft which should make things a little better and then this will be nice it'll be manufactured so that it's the right size for the shaft so it'll be up tight up against it bolt it right up against it and uh, this will be um, 
once again nice and tight on the shaft so no weeble wobble and I'm hoping that that gets everything um, good and solid right no more trouble if um, worse comes to worse as I showed you guys before I'm gonna ask for a little visualization right this is going to be up against the shoulder. The sprocket's going to be here. That's going to be all. Now I have the entire shaft sticking off. If this thing still wants to dance about, I'm going to put a, a pipe over it and a washer and bolt it right up so that this part is clamped right up, tied up on the shaft. Um, the keyway is keeping this thing, plus the bolts are keeping it. Um, it's up against the shoulder, so it can't slide in. And once again, because of the pipe and the washer and it's bolted to the end, it can't slide out. Um, then the only thing the keyway is doing, quite honestly, is keeping it from spinning. Right? So. Um, and once again, you guys could tell this took a long, a long time to, uh, to make. Um, and once again, hopefully my boring rod shows up tomorrow and I, uh, I can finish it up. It's interesting as you work with tools that you haven't worked with regularly in, in a bunch of years, um, you actually get better at you know what angle to put the cutting bit it in and what the cutting bit should look like how sharp it should be how fast to drive it um i did all i i i turned all the uh controls by hand i i didn't put the lathe into an automatic mode and let it go go on its own i didn't quite trust trust it for that um but it's it's um it's coming along what i want is of all things for this kawasaki mule i want it to be solid um reliable i don't want to have to fight with it there's a piece of stock i bought um but it the other thing i don't have is i don't have a cutting bar so i couldn't cut it off and i wanted it a little bigger a little bigger diameter anyway um, I think what I'm gonna do is the I'm driving that this thing with a um, I'm going from 12 to 17 or 10 to 17 I bought a, a bigger sprocket for it also um, because I don't feel to me, it doesn't seem like this thing, the torque converter, ever makes it to the point where it's unloaded. Um, I did wind it up a couple of times, and it didn't, it didn't feel like the torque converter completely unloaded. So I bought this bigger sprocket also. Um, this was 24, if I recall. 30. 41B30, so this is 30, and this was 17, 17, so that, that cuts me just about in half again, because once again, I never felt like this thing, this thing really, the door converter ever got to the point where it, um, completely unloaded and oh, that's not good I'm not gonna I think the chain might catch that well but it could be a touch more out or maybe the chains gonna miss I don't know we'll see yeah, because it, it should pull it out about that far. Yeah, it'll be it'll be going by barely. 
when one builds one of these things, the complication you always run into is mating apples to oranges, right? I mean, there's not a big deal mating a torque converter to an engine. Although this torque converter, I had to do some grinding to get it on the Predator engine. But to get the Predator engine with the torque converter to mate to any kind of frame, I had to notch the frame, right? So that, not huge to overcome, but you got to overcome it. Now you got to get the torque converter chain drive to drive this rear axle. Should be like piece of cake, fall off a log easy, but not always not always that easy and the other problem you run into maybe you guys have better supplies out where you are but where I am tractor supply like has the hubs this part of it and then you weld the gear onto it but it appears as if like they have a three-quarter inch hub in one store and then you got to go 50 miles in another direction to get the 24 tooth drive because they don't have it in the same store so that that always you know that adds to some ec extra time consumption I'm uh, yeah either way I'm gonna be fighting with this I might be stuck with the smaller sprocket the gear ratio wasn't horrible, but just the um, amount of power I'd like this thing to have. Um, I'm not, I'm not really interested in going fast. Um, it's got a very top-heavy feel to it. I, it's heavy enough where it stays on the ground, but I don't, I don't think I'd want to go winging into a turn too quickly. A little bit of fooling around I did do. Um, the front end does have it, even though there's a differential in the back, the front end did have a tendency to plow a bit. So, um, uh, probably I got a little, probably it's a little herky jerky on that side from being crashed. Anyway, folks, I really want to thank you all for watching and commenting. And subscribing I really appreciate you guys sticking with me for this project offering me good suggestions um, the comments and so forth and once again should anybody undertake this stuff you always got to be looking at the interfaces how am I going to get the torque converter to talk to the rear end how am I going to get the torque converter attached to the engine once the engine and torque converter are put together Am I going to be able to mount it, or am I going to have to do something crazy to get the things to mount? Um, that's, that's where life gets interesting. That's, that's the difference between, um, let's call it the men and the boys, when it comes to these projects. It's very easy to say, oh, I'm going to put this, you know, four-cylinder inline Honda engine onto a golf cart. It's easy to say. But when you actually get it in there, right, how are you going to get the exhaust hooked up, where the carburetor is going, are you going to be able to throttle that thing without breaking stuff, how are you getting the rear end in there, what kind of rear end are you using, are you going to have a differential or not, that, those, that's the difference between a project getting started or a project going for a real cheap price on uh, well getting started and then being sold on Craigslist for a cheap price with the words needs finishing next to it all right folks I really want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing remember to keep your feet down keep your head up and please get out there and enjoy all your days bye now folks